up. Thank you so much, Jason, for being here this morning. Take it away. All right. Well, thanks for having me. And, and definitely ask questions. I, um, I'm used to dealing a lot of questions. We do, you know, we work with web and internet and social media and all, all sorts of things. So um, certainly ask your questions. I'll jump right into it. Um, uh, today, today we'll, I'll give you a little bit about us so you can kind of see where we're coming from. We'll talk about why integrated marketing, um, strategically aimed marketing, which is really messaging and controlling your message, understanding content flow and how it works with uh, promotions, uh, planning and executing a program, and then kind of what it looks like. So I have a couple of sample pro uh, programs that we can look at so you can get some ideas on how people are using these, these tools. A little bit about us. Ah, Catherine, uh, you're good. Okay, good. Um, uh, we help businesses sell. Media Relations Agency is really our, our parent company. I um, and uh, primarily a PR firm, but uh, we tell we, we we help our customers tell their stories. In, in a nutshell, we're really four different uh, promotional channels we work within: publicity, social media, web, and advertising. Where I sit, I kind of sit in the middle sometimes <laughs> only because we're, we, we build websites, we do online advertising, we help with social media. A lot of what we do is putting together uh, promotional or content plans and then helping our customers execute them. I did leave this in here. For just some quite, if you have questions on any of our divisions, we have people that can answer questions on from editorial to digital marketing uh, to publicity. So is it okay if our members then contact any of these people that's, along with that's you? That's perfectly fine. Yep. Okay. Those are the heads of our division. So. Great. And then your information is later in the presentation, right? If they want to talk to you. If they want to talk to me, yeah, mine's at the end. So mm -hmm. and please drop me an email, give me a call. Um, I love this stuff. So. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> yep. So a little bit how we look at, at things and in and understanding how content marketing and just using the internet works. When we put together a piece of content, we tend to look at site, search, social, and sales. So we try to uh, make the whole process so each new piece of content that you add to your website make, makes it into a, a, a resource for your target market. It uh, provides keywords to the search engine so you're being found. It feeds your social channels. I think that's one of the main things that a lot of people come to us with is how do I keep – what do I say? <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, and then sales. So, so I always be thinking about sales, especially if you're doing more of the B2B stuff. So uh, we resource our sales people a lot to say what kind of content do you need, what stories do you need written, um, what should we be sharing, what questions do you get on a regular basis. Those are the types of things we get. So um, just step, just to kind of step back and look at what kind of how do we stay on point with the messaging. I think that's one of the other concerns that a lot of our customers have that are running businesses and can't do it all themselves, but but um, oops, Pat had a question there. All right, um, but they have they have, they have they have a concern that how can they let go of this when and still maintain a control of their messaging? So we, we try to first gain confidence in marketing terms so they're all speaking the same language. Uh, we have what are called code sheets. Code sheets are. Um, it's your messaging, it's your target market, it's kind of all the details that you need to run on effective campaigns. From there we select promotional channels, put together a calendar, uh, develop, we have control templates, so every piece of content that uh, you put out there, um, make sure that you're, you're, you have with them, you know, you're, you're, you're speaking to your customers, you have your call to action in there. So it just helps, uh, it helps the, the business owners and managers control the whole program, whether they're shooting it in their in-house or they're using outside um, content development or writers. And then, and then engage the creative team to execute the program. So we do have a book coming out actually on this whole topic. If you guys, if you send me a list, I can certainly mm -hmm. send them, the, I, I probably can send them a copy of it. Um, and it's just, it's really just to get, to, to get the, in line, and we call it <laughs> instead of instead of not planning and just firing randomly on your marketing campaigns, just a little bit of, of planning helps. It goes a long way. So, if you look at how content um, flows through systems today, um, I say WordPress here, but here you know websites, WordPress is just a system that we love to use. 
Um, but content can be put into your website, and your website is used for lead generation, SEO, um, sales if you're doing online sales. Uh, then email, we do a lot with email. Social media, and advertising. So it's kind of that's how we prioritize when we're putting pushing content out. You'd be surprised. Uh, you guys wouldn't be surprised. You're probably doing this already. But a lot of the email, how much success we have with email, um, utilizing that one. So after content has been created for one promotional channel, we often use it across multiple channels. So take one piece of content, maybe we'll post it on the internet, uh, on the website for social media, for, to, or for search engines to find it, but then we might break that into six different pieces of content that can be shared through different promotional channels. Reuse content as much as possible is, is, is one of our things we do. Um, are the recommendations on timing of those? Timing on social media? Right. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely look at the feedback for your own market that you're talking to. Facebook does a pretty good job, and I can pop into Facebook and show you some of our customers as far as when to post. Mm -hmm. um, definitely space them out. We do a lot of scheduling, so okay. so that that makes it so that we can sit down and work in two hours set up the communication plan for the week or whatever so that we have a post going out at that set dates. Oh, that's we'll get into a little bit of the scheduling. Okay. Uh, let's see. What, 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 are, what are some times we do? I have a customer in um, Lakeville that I use in this one because I thought it fit this group well. Um, and, and it was surprising because, what was it, Thursday afternoons? We were getting just huge why? I, I can't even tell you why. Afternoon. I've given up trying to <laughs> guess everything, but just read what you can from the data that you have. Once you start a program, you'll start to get some feedback right away, and you can and you can look into that. Okay, Kevin's got a question. Are you able to schedule posts on platforms other than Facebook? Sure. Um, certainly, WordPress is, is, is built in scheduling right in there. Um, and, and when you're, let me see. I'll come back to that because I because I'll just put my brain getting some of the software that we use. Um, Instagram, you schedule an Instagram with the question. Um, I don't know if you can directly, but I know you can use things like Hootsuite or other things to yeah, schedule. Yeah, that's where I was thinking. What are the what are the tools we use for scheduling? There is, oh man, I'll, I'll I'll think of one that we use a lot, but we do use Hootsuite. We do use um, Sprout Social. Um, there's so many tools out there, but. When you look at advertising, uh, we kind of look at four different types of advertising when we're doing stuff. Targeted social. So we'll use Facebook a lot to build out. I just did a campaign the other day, and it was um, targeting business buyer buyer behavior on Facebook. So I was looking at people that buy business services that live in within 20 miles of my office. We just put a campaign together like that. There's lots of targeting you can do on that. So we do targeted social across Facebook primarily. You do LinkedIn, really tight targeting on LinkedIn. But um, certainly keyword stuff with Google, um, because the, the buyer's in an active mode looking for something, um, it can be really work really well for customers. Um, tend to pay more per click for some of the, the, the local services, but that's mm. because it, they convert higher. I have a tree trimming company that I work with, and the conversion rate is so high. You know, I look at the conversion rate for our stuff, and it's different. You know, B two B stuff and longer, longer um, sales mm -hmm. process is definitely different than those ones where they're going to the internet, they're going to Google to find a solution to their problem today. Right. Not, uh, in, they want someone office. who can be there in a half hour. <laughs> so just get out of their way. Take your, you know, just. Uh, mm -hmm. and, um, social reach. We do a lot of social reach to base. It's basically boosting, um, but when you do boost, you can actually add some targeting too. And then uh, retargeting, so based on people that are in your email list or have visited your website or have visited your website, a specific page but not this page, um, that's retargeting. So we do a lot of retargeting on that front. Um, and I can show you some examples as we move down. But the idea is to create a plan that's scalable and fits your budget. Um, once the audience, we, we try to, we kind of build Build audience and then monetize it. Oh, now that's two slides up, so I won't even go into it. I'll jump <laughs> into that in a second. But let's look at the, how we schedule stuff. Um, you you were uh, 
Jill, you were talking about how you have a monthly event. We do a lot of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. If you can see in this chart right here, I know there's lots of dots and a lot of stuff happening there. But we try to build, 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 and then – oh, they're not seeing my pencil, are they? Yes, they are seeing your pencil. Okay, so, so build, build, <laughs> and, and, then, and then have the event, and then you kind of can slow down. So we try to, to follow that cycle, and then you can repeat it and, and repeat the things that work well, test different things if you have kind of a monthly cycle. Um, Develop, we talked about code sheets briefly and control templates. I know these are new terms, but, but again, code sheets is just documenting who, what, what your message is, how you're different than your competitor, why people should use you. And, and the control templates is making sure every piece of content that you put out, A, speaks to those groups, and B, includes your, your points of differentiation in your um, call to action. Uh, but then we push it through all these different promotional channels. On the right here, you can see uh, home page feature, any content promotions. Did I did it flip past a bunch of slides? It did. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can. Um, we're we're we have till ten thirty, right? We do have till ten okay, thirty. So so I'm just gonna, so I can talk about a couple round of through how you like. <laughs> yeah. So so we talk about media coverage. So we do a lot of this in the beginning of a campaign to get media coverage to get the name the word. Uh, word out there about certainly event marketing, but um, to build up the social media channels. Um, website, uh, I'm going to just pop up to this slide for two seconds. I really did jump over. That's what she said. There was a blip and there really was. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do a lot of PR, so just uh, uh, PR you have a little less control. Um, you, know, you have to submit your story ideas to the media and they're co-produced with the media. Um, but it is what people are people are listening to when they turn on the radio or read the paper. That's what they're looking for. So having you in there certainly creates credibility, gives you a third party endorsement. And we use that a lot at the beginning of campaigns to get the name out there, build your Facebook page, um, and, and go that way. Um, and I just want to talk about the website promotional channels because that's next on that uh, chart below. It's certainly blogs to carry your messages, uh, landing pages to close the deal on prime pages through the site, call to action. So it's in content offers, side panels, pop-ins, all that kind of stuff, and email. Um, so that two seconds on that, if I jump down here, there we go. Now we're back on track. Um, you can kind of see how we have can – I, I can zoom in on here, right? I think you should. Does that look bigger for you when I do that? Not to me. No. Okay, it does. I'm guessing <laughs> zoom is not <laughs> – That's not the right zoom. Mm -hmm. um, but this particular client looks so that they have a monthly sale. They sell clothes, so they put they promoted these are featured outfits that they're putting out on Tuesdays. It looks like, and then you can see how they might put that. They put a, a blog about it, schedule on a face or post it on Facebook. They have tweets going out every day that are just scheduled at the beginning of the month, and then Facebook, and then you can see post boosting, mm -hmm. buy campaigns. Um, in retargeting on those ones, and then the, the the dollar amounts get bigger towards the towards the actual event, um, and it allows them to do some of that retargeting on the people at the end of the website to really get them to come in. So, is it recommended that you do do the boosting and you do do the paid advertising with with the social media? Uh, it's certainly. Certainly, <laughs> right. Uh, uh, and I know there's this. Is it, is it, is it a concern about? It's a concern about money and budgeting. Money budgeting. <laughs> that's my concern. <laughs> well, that's always the concern. Um, uh, I will show you some campaigns that, that you can at least decide. Uh, I think that uh, it does take time to build mm -hmm. something that's scalable. Um, when we look at the sample that's in here, we were able to get it down to like four dollars per sale of a four hundred dollar item. Okay. So it completely made sense. So if for you them. think about <laughs> it that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but to get the word out there to begin with, certainly. But they're but we're we're utilizing their email list and everything else to really right. push it. Uh, I think that it ta it does take the customer seeing you in three, four, five different spots to to. To really get their attention. Really get the attention. Um, okay. You'd be surprised how much our search engines are affected by all the advertising we do. So when we're doing a lot of advertising or we're in PR, mm -hmm. then we're we're, and of course it makes sense when they're typing in your company name. Right. But you broaden it out so you can be found by other things. 
Okay. And I'll jump into that. And I'll just show you that in a second here. But I want to just explain kind of our this, this slide here where we talk about the phases of, of an active social media or even content marketing program. Get the content flow going, consistent, quality, optimized and targeted content. Um, then, then have engagement. Make sure you have people that are there to respond and mm -hmm. to, to start funneling questions into the sales staff or sometimes it's just you. You know, I know how it goes. Um, <laughs> uh, but establish the, 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 the groundwork for two-way communication. Um, landing pages and online forms we also set up during that time. So if you have a product that you're selling online or an event, you need to have an event page to send people to, right. <laughs> that type of a thing. And then build that network out. That's where we talk about a lot of publicity a lot of social media advertising and that type of activity to build the network out more rapidly. Certainly networking. I, I used to do, I used to is there a whiteboard on here? I could draw a quick chart. Right. If you go to the top, can I take over for sure. a moment and then I think we can get you to a whiteboard. There you go. Do you see that as well? I think so. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm not going to draw very neatly, but you know we, we, we kind of look at the this growing your network as uh, it can color it in. Uh, that's not going to work. Um, but a series of circles that are going out outward, focus starting first with your your staff, um, friends, family, and then customers, and then potential customers, and then and then um, target market, and then the general audience. So so we work that way. You know, when you start to think about that, well, let's get it on our receipts, our social media channels. Let's get it on at the register. Let's get. Um, Let's send emails out to our email list and ask them to join. Uh, those types of things, and so just work with your with the people that you're already connected with first, and get them involved. They'll be more supportive too when you start to um, get more people in the in the mix talking. Okay, Sue's got a question kind of related to that. Other than press releases, how do you get an announcement out in terms of media outlets? Well, I wish Heather was here. Heather's <laughs> our, my my PR. Uh, um, I okay. think, I think that prime, might be a No, I can, I can address it. Though. I've been I've been with them 25 years, so uh, um, you can primarily be how we do it, and I don't know any more effective way is a lot of one-on-one -on -one communications with the media. So starting to build your um, audience. Um, when I, I'll go through a sample here, and really we kind of introduce them to a bunch uh, to a bunch of uh, producers. At like Care 11 and that type of stuff. Once you have those connections, just maintain them really well. Um, oh, he's so, <laughs> so. So we don't. We actually we put together press releases. We put together pre-written articles. But primarily, it's about calling. It's really hard to get through the media. But the one thing to think about is they do need help producing content. They're they're all understaffed and they need <laughs> so they need help putting good stuff together. So you do have if you can start to reach out to them and get good contact. Start locally with you know in your area, connect with them on Twitter, those types of things. The last step in this is um, monetize traffic. So once you have a network. Then develop develop the ability to point that network towards your intended results, whether it's an event, whether it's a sale, um, an offering that you have. That's kind of how, how we try to go about it. Is this making sense? Makes sense to me. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Right. <laughs> I'm also one of you. <laughs> one of the people needing to do this, <laughs> so I can better serve Metro IVA and our members listening today. So, so Paul's Market is a local farmer, farmer's market, greenhouse type of a place oh. in Lakeville. Uh -huh. So uh, we've been working with them. We built their first website in 99, I think. But over the last four years, we've been working with them just as an ongoing, once a month, you know, we do monthly work with them. Um, and they brought a, a new product to, actually, first we built out their network, and then all of a sudden they had, you know, 9,000 people on Facebook. and. 10,000 people in their email list, and the CSAs, if you guys are familiar with CSAs, mm -hmm. um, that came out. And so they want they, this product kind of paired perfectly with their audience, and it was, goes right from their farms. And so, that, so I can just walk through what they did, because I think that it might kind of fit with a lot of what a lot of people are doing. In it does group. sound so, similar. Uh, let's see here. Oops, I got to go. And 
you let me know. Can you see my screen? I'm not right now. So you're looking at the desktop? Oh, it's having me download this it. again. It's not my first time sharing. I tested this yesterday, but. Okay. Do you see any questions come up while I'm going through here? Or? Feel free to ask questions. Um, we're switching over, so Jason could do some um, web. <laughs> you can share his desktop to show you some examples. Click webinar is a little bit of a two-stage process as far as getting that up, so it's going to take a moment. If you've got a question, please ask that while we get this going. So you've been working with Pauls then for quite a while. Yeah, off and on. Uh, but then for the last four years it's been just constant. It's been, mm -hmm. We meet once a month. It's their typical monthly program where we meet once a month, put together what we're going to do, who's doing what, and they do a lot of the right. They do all of the one-on-one, -on -one, or all of the kind of, um, what is it, the very authentic communications. Oh, okay. Here's what's happening in the market. Here's questions mm -hmm. we had, all that type of stuff. And then we do more of the promotional communications with their staff. So we try, or not their staff, with their with their network. So we try to get that network then to go buy something. Or <laughs> uh huh. Okay. So um, it's a good. So it stays in their own voice, then they do more of the Twitter and they do those daily communications. Yep, they do a lot of daily communications. We put together. I'll I'll show you how how that that chart that we put together there feeds into their email, into their social media, and into their advertising pieces. So if I can get past this connecting piece. Are we getting there? And it's not like hiding behind something. What are you seeing? I am seeing the box that says already sharing. <laughs> Yeah, so don't close the pop up. Oh, <laughs> the one I just closed. Once a post goes on social media, how frequently do you monitor responses without getting frazzled? <laughs> Good question, oh. Sue. <laughs> um, I think we're always monitoring. Uh, actually, can you see my screen now? No luck. You'll tell me when it works. I'll tell you when we're up. Um, definitely monitor that. And on the ads, too, we do a lot of monitoring. A lot of the ads that work the best are the ones with the best comments on it. So, so we're monitoring, we're answering questions, we're diverting things out of the public if it needs to be discussed somewhere else. Um, you just got to monitor. Have, I, my customers use phones to do yeah. most, of that, most of the monitoring. Um, okay. And as far as getting people to actually engage and to to give those comments, do you have any little tips that you could put in a tweet? I mean, is it asking questions? Is it certainly? How, yeah, I mean, asking <laughs> questions is one of the first tips that we talk about when you're trying to get engagement. Um, we're doing one right now where it's caption this photo. That's kind of a the, you know, fun thing oh. they do where they go around the farm and they take pictures of stuff that's happening and they say caption this. Okay. Um, and that gets comments going. And it's important because uh, a lot of concerns that people have that are doing social media stuff is my audience being my posts. We're good. So you need to you need to get that engagement so they do see it. And and it's not necessarily I don't know, there's lots of theories out there as to why you're seeing a lower rate. Uh -huh. This particular client still sees increases in engagement year over year. But mm -hmm. they're saying, I don't see these, you know, 10,000 comments or whatever, you know, huge numbers as much. Uh -huh. um, there's more competition for each person's time. Yeah. One thing that I will say is links has become, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chain this long sentence together. Stop me if it gets really <laughs> uh, Okay. Um, the way that Facebook decides what shows up in people's feeds is, is many different variables, but mm -hmm. one of them is what types of content do they engage with most. If you looked at Facebook five years ago, I would say it's photos. It's people going there to see pictures of their grandkids and their mm -hmm. engagement with photos more than anything. 
the biggest thing I've seen since then is the shift to links. So okay. actually linking your website through the post and mm -hmm. having a nice picture in your featured image right. um, actually gets a better response in, in front of more people, partly because they're using it to, to aggregate news for them. Basically. Right. That's what I heard that you can raise your score just by the number of links in and out of your website. Oh, we can talk about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But this, this is more on Facebook when you're okay. sharing links rather than just posting photos and test it out on your audience. You got it. You got to try it. But and the new little video clips. Video clips. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and we did. Um, we have an ad running that uh, is. Oh, what is it called? Canvas. Facebook Canvas, which is really okay. interesting. We have like a big, if you can manage a big canvas, and you know, people can use their phone to look at different pieces of it to give it, tell a broader story. Okay. Um, it's still new. It's kind of it's interesting, but worth checking out. Okay, we've got right, your yeah, screen now. <laughs> and I and, and I, I don't want to lose the the you mentioned basically what I'll call backlinks. You said okay. You want links because I can show you There's a couple tools. Questions that about you that. that. So, so Paul's market, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but it does show how these pieces work here. These guys send a weekly newsletter out to their customers and it has an 80% open rate. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's because I it's, want that. It's good content. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it fits in. Uh, here, I'm, I'm just going to pop it up just to. Uh, good content, it's what they're looking for. And they have a schedule where they put all this stuff into their website, and then these emails pick all the pieces from the website and put it together for them, so they don't have to. The only thing difficult is getting the content together, which, <laughs> which is hard enough, as everyone knows. Um, but then they have a monthly newsletter that goes up to their entire list, which is now over thirty thousand, and um, that's getting coupons, getting people into the store through coupons. Again, it's just. They know, they mm -hmm. see it, and we use the same subject line every time. They see it coming, and they want to open it. So even so the, the same subject line, so good. people know what to look for. And uh, yeah, with the newsletter type. I yeah. really like newsletters because it's more of in placing your differentiation, your marketing messaging within within the content. Mm -hmm. So in newsletters, they know what they're going to get. They, a lot of people just want that coupon. You know, that's that yep. stuff. I'll stop pointing with my finger and start using. The phone. <laughs> anyway, so email marketing is a large piece of it. And if we look at, um, uh, do I have this? Oh, yeah, let's go here. Let's see. Do I have? Yeah. So if you're familiar with WordPress, um, their whole site's built on WordPress. Uh, so every newsletter they have has recipes, and then it has what food comes. Within your CSA that week, oh, so people so really it love maps to see. To what's going to be in your box? Yep, yep. So then these are the same way. So every recipe. So if you go there and start to see what you get, mm -hmm. what, what's in your box is the big <laughs> uh, article <laughs> type. But you know, here's the ingredients, recipe. But then it. Well, I can't believe I don't have more green beans on this one. <laughs> yeah. it, connects, it connects back to what you know what. Uh, What's in your share? So if I look at um, mm -hmm. produce availability on here, and I won't spend too much time, but it's a, it just it's that make it so that your site becomes a resource. Use that content in your in social media and email, and and and, and through uh, advertising. And, and the last step is actually using advertising for more, so they can see what types of food comes in their thing, in their share boxes every week. And this is the content that actually goes in the newsletter. Okay. This picture in this context. So you were using things in multiple oh, places. Yeah. So yeah. They go in there and they check a couple boxes in the back to decide what's going to go. When they know, they don't right. know because it's, it's about when it comes out of the ground. <laughs> so, uh -huh. And that, that allows people to come here and see all sorts of things. So. And that's totally just through the WordPress. It's all, yeah, yeah. It's so all WordPress. Yep. Great. For sure. WordPress is powerful. We love, I, we've worked with a lot of things over the years and just love WordPress. When we first started with them, they did, we, did, we got 46 placements in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. them, like here's them on uh, oh I can't tell care eleven or that something. does look like it. <laughs> <laughs> they still do some stuff. They've maintained their, those, some of those relationships on their own, but they use that to really get their name known mm -hmm. uh, throughout the Twin Cities. Um, search engine optimization. You know, if we they added pickup locations, so kind of around the Twin Cities. So we helped them to. 
get set up so they're being found. Elk right. River, Bloomington. Way up top too. <laughs> yep. Yep. See, I shouldn't. I shouldn't do this. You never mm. know when we're going to argue. MN, not Bloomington, California. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh. It took your CSA and it turned it into California. <laughs> All right. I spelled it wrong. Oh. <laughs> that makes more sense, but. Um, so there are number yes. four for that one, or I don't, you know, I, we, we're not selling, we're not in the selling season, we're in the fulfilling season right now right. for them. But that was, it, it's big, if you're going to do advertising, if you're going to do those things, make sure that you're found there as well. Um, so localized content, client library, that's just a mm -hmm. custom post type in, in Facebook, or in WordPress where we had lots of content that helps them to be found by mm -hmm. very unique things, <laughs> each plant name, you know, or perennials. Types of things. And then a constant stream of content to make sure that the, the content is being added to the website. We do do cornerstoning, which means set up pages for your primary services, and then in, in your content plan have uh, links to those. So have a schedule of posts that talk about this service and make sure you always are linking to that. So Google likes to see you talk about the links, but that's his internal link. So Google likes to see if, if Google sees a bunch of pages linking to one primary page, it's going to raise its, its Okay, rating. raise its so, score. Okay. Yeah, its score, exactly. Digital advertising, we talked about this before, but they use all those methods of advertising. Mm -hmm. And this is the one where we talked about the, uh, oh yeah, types of posts. Mm -hmm. About ninety percent of their stuff is this type of thing, you know. Happy birthday, oh. poor man, God, da, 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 da. <laughs> Who doesn't want to see a cute exactly. dog? Exactly, <laughs> the dog does very well. <laughs> and right now, the so the the it's a multi generational farm, and now one of the ones that's really big right now is um, with their young, one of their younger farmers. Oh, just because uh, he's out there, he, yeah. he's out talking and stuff, so he's been really big and. Those types of things, but and then on the other side of it is the the peer promotional stuff, where like uh -huh. sign up now, da 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 da. And that's a ninety ten. That's what we for these guys. That's about what we do. We do a, a lot of content. Um, if we look at how much content, oh yeah, here we go. So they're doing about two a day on average. Okay. Uh, on Facebook, something goes out on Twitter every day. This year it's going to be more because we've started pulling different pieces of our website. You can imagine if you have a bunch of recipes, you can. Um, we use something called Revive Old Post, which is a plugin for WordPress that just goes and randomly picks recipes and posts it out there to the social media. Okay. So, so it helps not, oh. to use that content right. and get it out there. Um, 240 blogs, you can see they're updating their site. Often. About five times, I don't know, a lot. <laughs> right, right. So nothing's stale out there. You nothing's stale. having that same thing for a month. Yeah. That doesn't really reach new people. Okay, Sue's got a question. Is this a good place to talk about? Will you describe, please, how to make the best use of dispersing one piece of content to the range of the social media platforms? So one piece of content with Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Anything else? Yep. So, well, and that's and, and one example is those the, the emails that we have here where. You know, we're making a, we're putting a recipe on the website. Mm -hmm. We're putting three recipes in the newsletter, <laughs> same content. Okay. Uh, and then we are making it a resource on the site, so when people search for recipes or they search by, hey, I'm getting green beans, show me all the recipes you have for green beans. So that's all the web and email side. Now, as far as um, uh, social channels, mm -hmm. um, start with call. I'm trying to think. Twitter, we may write three, four different descriptions of a piece of content, and it's just mm -hmm. sharing the link out. So we do a lot of And it's the same link. Sharing that the is. same link. Um, you can change the image on, on those too. Right. So um, when, we, when we post, say, say our B2B type customers, mm -hmm. when we post a blog post to uh, the Internet, it will automatically be, be posted that day, but then we'll reschedule it three more times over the next three months, that same blog post. Okay. And we'll write three different introductions to the article, three different what we call wrapper copy or uh -huh. kind of a, an engaging, more personal type of an introduction to the article. Right. And then we'll schedule those out three times. And each of those is going to have like a different image or? Yeah. Well, oftentimes for a different image, they don't have to because you have enough going right. through. And I kind of always picture it like your social media is like a river. Um, people don't, where your inbox is more like a bucket, you know, yeah. people feel like right. they have to read everything in their inbox, but your social media is more like they can 
put their hands through the water and went okay. in there. You know, Hop on TV. a tube and float for a while. Yeah, it's like, it's on TV. You can turn it on and watch it. Okay. But half the time you're not watching it. Right. So uh, people aren't going to be. I think most of my customers are more concerned about. Are, are, hmm, how do I say this? They're more concerned about putting too much out, yeah. but they should be probably concerned about not putting enough out. Okay, because you, you don't want to annoy your people. Yeah, you don't want to annoy your people. You don't want to be one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those people are not following anymore, but okay. So yeah, that's but, but, it's but safe. most often they're not communicating as much. No. And I would rank them as more on Twitter, like multiple tweets on Twitter every, every day. Okay. Facebook at least once. So show those green beans in the field, Nine. in the bowl, oh, and sure. in the box. <laughs> and so, yep. Okay. And then, and then, email, and then, blogging. Uh, I like it three times a week. I, I think that's a good number to get enough content in there. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll do a quick look at when we combine a content plan with a keyword list. Um, because that'll help with what you're talking about there. Mm -hmm. So why don't, I, why don't I just give you a quick, let's see, is there anything on here? No, nah, I'll leave that alone. I'll stop scrolling too. It's probably driving me. <laughs> don't get a speed right. 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you going back to the slides? Yep. Okay, we can just click on the top. And are you there as well? If I do that. You guys see? Actually, no. I was going to show you the keyword. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Sorry. I'll show you one thing real quick. Uh, when you're putting together that content, um, how we do it. You seeing it? No, it's going to load again. Okay. It's going to ask me to download. That click webinar app. <laughs> okay. What I do is I. Find a website that you are that's a competitor of yours. Mm -hmm. I often would just go, what keyword do I want to be found in in my area? Type it into Google. Um, when you're there, it's coming up in just a second here. Mm -hmm. When you're there, you'll when you go to the first listing that is a business, not an ad. Not, well, not <laughs> an ad, but but not Wikipedia or. Um, mm -hmm. I saw whole, so I so just trying holistic dog food for example. I did a search. I want to be found by holistic dog food. Um, go down and find the first one. There's the first listing, and it's a, and it is a company. Mm -hmm. So go down and find the first one that's like a competitor to you. Grab that address, and there's a product called SEM Rush out there. You can get a free trial of it. We use it every day. SEM Rush. SEM Rush. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, we use this for just research, but um, I put in holistic select in here. It's telling me that they're getting about eleven thousand or twenty-four thousand dollars worth of traffic a month through organic search. Um, I can then dig into well, what keywords are they using? And then you talk about the links. What links are are they being are linking to their site? Again, if, if Google looks at um, how do I find the best resource for the people that are? Whoops! I don't, is all this? I've reached my search. My search. <laughs> Wonderful. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, you had to do the email on the bottom. Is that really? No. Yeah, it's wanting you to re-register there, but the login's on the bottom. Oh. I get caught that. Uh, but so Google's trying to find the best resource for you, and they're saying one of the factors is how many people link to your site. Mm -hmm. Lots of people link to your site, it's a better chance of being ranked high. So when, if you can look at a place like this who's a competitor of yours and find out who is linking to yours, you're going to find directories. You're going to find networking opportunities that you can do. You're going to find places that you can post your articles um, to have links back to you. Uh -huh. So they're saying whole, you know, Odyssey Pets, Doggy Style Pet Shop, uh, Pet Essentials Pet Store. So there's a lot of places linking to their website. 
um, and then it gives you an opportunity to go after it. So I would definitely okay. try this, whether you're a painter, uh, you know, whatever your industry is, if you want to be found locally, see what's coming up there. And that's what we try to do is help uh -huh. be the best in your area. You know, right. you know, it's, it's, cause we're not a um, freelance shop, you know, but, but we're able to take companies and put them into their little market and mm -hmm. make them happen, you know, make it happen for them. Okay, so okay. that can give you great ideas of how people are getting to getting to the top dog. So yep. then you can you can be you can use yep. that. and then go after these places to try to get a link to your own website. Right. Okay. So we do a lot of that when we that's kind of the, the external links. You talked about links as being important. This is an example of that. Um, and you said there's a free um, like a free trial of SEM Rush? Yep. Yep. I'm not sure how long it is or how many times you can search or uh, but even when you're not logged in, you can run searches every day and to do at least for your business, you could do it. Okay. But um, oh God, we use it for PR now, you know, to find uh, to find what publications are talking about our competitor and say, well, there's some things that we could go after. <laughs> yeah. And it's a great tool, and it also is a great tool for finding keywords. So I want to know what keywords are on their website, what they're being ranked by, what they're doing. I can take a look at where they're ranked high and what are the keywords. And then, oh, okay, so now I'll, I'll bounce back into, so just stop sharing. Oh, on the top, there's a top tab too um, that you can switch between the open tabs. So we're back on. I'm seeing us back on Hummel. Oh, we are, right here? Yeah. This is where we're oh, going to be. Okay, yep. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. We've talked about a lot, Jason, and it looks <laughs> like we have about ten minutes left. If you've got questions, um, feel free to type those in. Yeah, definitely pick my brain. I mean, I've run, I've worked on campaigns introducing products nationwide, um, but I do, I do a lot of stuff with local marketing. So um, we found success there. We, we found ways to. Utilize the channels that are available now. Make it as easy as possible. We always say we try to take te technology out of the way because um, it's always going to be, you know, the pain should be figuring out what to say. Mm -hmm. What's the fee structure to work with your company? Um, we have our starter packages. We have where we put together a marketing plan with our customers, build the website around it. Connect all the social channels, set up ad, you know, AdWords, all the advertising things, put the promotional plan together, build the site, launch the site. That's a, that's like a forty seven. We have a program that we're doing for local business that's forty seven hundred dollars. And then you, what you do is we we do the planning with you, build the website. At that point, if you if you say, then you get to see exactly what you're going to get. At mm -hmm. that point, you can say this isn't a good match or it isn't. And if it is, then we do our take a half payment and then payment when it launches. Um, okay. Do you have all? As we have. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Do you have any a la carte services if somebody does have an established website? Sure. Yep. So that's kind of our starter package, just to get people okay. going, making sure. I, you know, what I didn't, I didn't talk about today, which is really important, is handling site reviews in directories. That's part of our program. Mm -hmm. um, basically, being found, and then, and then the ability to have the reviews come through your website first. And then okay. be disseminated out to Google, um, Facebook mapping, uh, all of the different okay, review the, sites. Right. Um, sorry, you said all, all the card stuff. Yeah, we have no. clients that send. I think we need to have you back, Jason. This is something <laughs> really interesting. I want to. <laughs> I want to keep talking about that. But right, if you do already have a site. Sure. We we have we have you can we have um, what are, what do we call that? What we call like hourly packs, where you can put some money in account. And just when you need something, we give you an estimate on taking, and then do the work and take it off the account. Um, mm -hmm. We also have what we call digital marketing, or yeah, digital marketing assistants, and those are people that just know they're all they're all kind of certified with AdWords, Google Analytics. They know how to run Mailchimp and Exact Target, mm -hmm. Constant Contact, and they just kind of are there to help make all this stuff work. Okay. Um, uh, and so we have them that it's more of a monthly program, but they can be same way. It's mm -hmm. typically setting up a monthly program where you have a mix of a digital marketing assistant and then access to talent, which is developers and designers and writers and videographers right. and that type of Ooh. stuff. So 
Okay. Yeah, if you, I mean, most of our clients can't have a reporter there, so they nope. have their own people on staff doing a lot of the, day, the, the collection of what's happening. Right, and that's but, a good match for ours because we are local independents and a lot of yeah. them are small shops where yeah. they are everything. They're everything. I, I, can, uh -huh. I get it. And they still got to run their business. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And it can't be. Um, I think that there's ways to make it work, though. I really uh -huh. do as far as um, a mix of either, you know, you know, when we do our training to get people running, executing a plan or something, um, the idea is that they can have someone in, in, inside internally. And then they can have the tools that they can uh, monitor what's happening mm -hmm. <laughs> and evaluate and help and help uh, kind of tune people in, whether it's an internal person or an external person. To right, to see how it's actually to, working to and how it's playing. To keep your metrics on point right. and to be always focused on those metrics. Whether it's usually building mm -hmm. your network and then converting that network into sales, whether it's coupons and, you know, inside right. coupons to bring people inside, or it's uh, buying online, or it's leads. Mm -hmm. do a lot of that stuff. And then lead gen is a lot of SEO work. Yeah. So. Okay. Oh, she said, what if I have a site? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's where I can connect you with one of our digital marketing specialists or, or assistants and kind of put a plan together if you want. And it's mm -hmm. where it's, it depends how much you spend on advertising. It's, uh, there's a lot of right. variables that go into it because that goes right through us kind of to Facebook or Google, um, uh, primarily those two sources for advertising. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Thank <laughs> okay, we're down to about five minutes. Um, let's see. I think the next slide is your contact information. Oh, right? I should put that up there instead of. Yep. So okay. just, and I'll just take two seconds. Um, Media relations agency is we consider our parent agency, um, but they work with national companies doing. PR primarily, and then we assist them. And then Checkerboard is, up, is my company, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where we do web development, online marketing, and those types of things. So it's kind of a good marriage, mm -hmm. um, and it's different client base oftentimes. I do okay. a lot more local stuff. I just did two, uh, like I was telling you before, I did right. two funeral homes to help mm -hmm. them compete with uh, national crema crema crematory type companies that were kind of taking a bunch of their business. And I think that's kind of a nationwide thing. So. And we just made it so they have a constant content stream already, right. obituaries that people uh, want to get. Uh -huh. so we made it so they put it into their website. It feeds out to two different websites, gets sent out via email, and posts uh -huh. on their social media. So okay. they we simplified their processes so right. the person that managed it spent a lot less time, and we actually gave more reach to each of those. Um, right. That then, sounds critical for so many of the yep. small businesses is to simplify it and make it doable. Make it as easy as possible to get the content in as many places as possible. And not reinvent everything, but use what's already there. Yep. Yep. And give people what they want. Yeah. And then just mix your messages into it so that they know what you do and who you are. Okay. Good matches, but. Okay. Publicity.com is our parent company, and Checkerboard.com is really our company. And if you want to see what we do, go there. <laughs> just Sounds great. Out. Everybody check out checkerboard.com. <laughs> okay. And then with just a couple minutes left, I'm going to let you know about some of the Metro IBA things that we have coming up. And we have our upcoming events. Check out buylocaltwincities.com slash events or metroiba.com slash events. Either way will get you there. We have, um, well, later today, we have our roundtable for excellence in business, and that's a members-only opportunity to just discuss best practices. It's a closed group, so we can ensure privacy and compet competitiveness. So, um, take a look at our website, and you'll be able to find out more information about that. We have a small business series, and this is a breakfast seminar on Thursday morning. It's free, and it's open to everybody. Hour and wage issues for Minnesota small businesses. That's down at Helmuth and Johnson. They, we are co-sponsoring with them. Um, our normal Tuesday, first Tuesday networking event. We won't have any on July 4th, so go celebrate your independence instead. And to let you know, we're working on the third annual Buy Local Guide. And the membership deadline for that Buy Local Guide to be included is July 28th. Any member who is current will get a free list in that guide. We've got 25,000 copies that are sent out Throughout the Twin Cities, 10,000 go out with Minnesota Business Magazine 
So you'll reach a lot of people, and just by becoming a member, you will be included. And if you're not already a member but want to learn more, go to buylocaltwincities.com, join, and you'll find out more about us. Oh, Sue, you just got approved for the Super Bowl? Oh, exciting. I've been curious to know who of our members or who of our listeners have been included in that small business Super Bowl push. So Sue is looking for ideas to promote. Um, is it okay, Sue, if Jason follows up with you on that? Yeah, and what is what is so like oh, the, the Super Bowl? Yeah, the, the Super Bowl business? has a push to use local contractors, local businesses, and promote them. And you have to do a, um, I think it was like a two minute elevator speech demo, and then they would grade and and rate and decide whether you would be included as one of their. That's really okay, exciting. So, so That's yeah, really that is really excited. Um, I've been curious about that because I'd love. Sue, if you're open, I would love to follow you through this process and just check in so we can report back to our members how that's going. But yeah. Scarborough Fair. Uh-huh. Oh, how cool is that? Okay. Right. That's a neat little shop over on Como and Carter. Work it. It's a lovely spot. <laughs> I just think that is, that's really exciting. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely. And it built on WordPress, I see. Sorry, I'm already digging right, into Right, you're already digging into the site. <laughs> right, and a few says over 1,000 people applied and 420 were approved as Super Bowl small business or local business, small local business. I can't remember if it was only small and local or just local independent. But, oh, excited, Sue. So happy to hear for that. All right. Yeah, I'll follow, I'll, I'll follow up with you. I'll be back in my office <laughs> in a while here. but. Okay, and then one last thing, if anyone's got an idea of a webinar they would like to hear in the future, um, give us a call or give us a, um, uh, an email at info at metroiba.org and we'd be happy to listen, take ideas how we can better meet your needs as independent businesses in the Twin Cities area. So with that, thank you so very much, Jason, for coming on in. Thank and you. And we have learned a lot. <laughs> I'm excited about There's this. A lot there. Maybe we need to have you back to talk more. Yeah. <laughs> any any questions that you feel? I mean, we'll put something. We'll write something up and send it out if you want. I mean, that's okay. what we do. We we field questions and do a lot of research. <laughs> so, as you can imagine, you know, the industry is always changing. So it's, someone needs to be in charge of just trying to stay on top of that. Right, it is. So, okay. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And um, I'll send out the recording and the slides later today. Appreciate it all. Oh, we look like we have one more comment coming in from Sue. So I'm just going to wait for just a second. Oh, Jason, are you I was going to ask you, is Dakota County in there? Is that, is that we do reach to Dakota County, yes. Right. I'll talk uh -huh. to the people. I'll talk to my office. We'll, and it sounds like I have till the end of the week, you said? Oh, you have, you have till the end of, G, uh, end of July. End of July. Uh -huh. In the next directory. In, in the next final. directory. and um, I'll talk to you about that. It sounds talk like a good to me program, about so. that. Yes, generally our presenters are members. And I didn't specify that this time because I know Jason is right on the distance line and he very willingly drove in an hour and a half for today's presentation <laughs> in the rain. So well, I live, thank I you. I live on the south side of the city, so, but I work, in, I work in Burnsville. So. Okay. Thanks, Sue, for that. And with that, we'll see you next month. Bye.